hey guys welcome back to xamarin guys so in this tutorial we are going to log in with google so i have one login page which has two buttons that is login with facebook and login with google my previous tutorial was regarding login with facebook now in this tutorial we are going to login with our google account inside our xamarin forms android as well as ios project so at first we are going to add this plugin that is xamarin.auth inside our shared android and ios project now let's go to google developer console so selecting on google developer console we'll get our login screen so at first we are going to create a new project so let's give our project name as railways and you can give any name as you like so my project name is railways then after it gets created we are going to auth content screen then we are going to select create after that we have to give our application name then we don't need to select anything over here as we need email profile option whenever the google sign in authentication takes place now let's go to our credentials option then here we are going to create oauth client id for our android project so let's give our project name as railways then for key tool we need to archive our android project so i'll set my android project as set as default and then select release option and archive the project so selecting on ad hoc we can create a new key store license so you can create a new certificate from here by adding your allies name anything you may like i have already done that so i'll select my real words certificate here i can get my sh1 key so let's copy my sh1a key over here and then paste it out then we need our android package name which can be got by going to option then select android application then we have to copy our package name then paste it over here that's all now let's create our android project over here so this is what we want inside our application keep that sign in id separately in our notepad so that we can use it later now let's configure our ios credentials so again we'll follow the same rule for our ios project let's give our project name as real words then let's expand our ios project inside our info.plist here we'll get our bundle identifier then paste it over here then let's create our ios credentials so this is our ios client id so the top one is the android and the second one is the ios now i'll give that link in the description below i'll download the whole code from here this is the app that has been developed by microsoft for authentication you are free to use it sorry my app was closed i need to reopen it again so that i can add code from oauth native flow app to my real words application so i'll put that screen side by side so that i can copy the code to my app so in this pre-built app it has login button whenever it is clicked then it goes to this page 
that is the CS of its own page. Then this is the set of code that is mainly used for login with Google. So we are going to copy that whole code and paste it inside our project that is real words. Let's create a new class named as constant.cs inside our project. I'll create a new folder named as app constant. Then let's create a new folder and inside that folder I'll create a new class named as constants. I'll copy whole code from here and then paste it inside our project here there are some constant strings that need to be predefined so that our application will be using those string during the time of login so the class was made inside our project name dot app constant so we have constants inside our app constant folder but it is not recognizing because of some plugin issues over here so i'll select the second option that is app dot app constant dot constant that is our ios redirect url is inside our folder name app constant dot constants so Wherever the issues are there, I'm going to paste it out over there. So I have forgot two method from our previous project to be added over here. Now we are left with two classes that is authentication state and user class. So we'll be grabbing those classes from our previous project. So this is the class name that is user.cs which will be placed inside our authentication helpers folder. Let's grab the code of user.cs from our previous project and paste it over here. So I am using using newtonsoft.json that is taken from newtonsoft.json package so inherit that now we are left with last class name that is authentication state so I will create a new class over here in that same folder that is auth helpers folder now inside this I need to grab that code That's all. Now let's go to our login page.xaml.cs and authentication state will get inherited from our auth helpers folder. So here we have left some of the constants to be called from same folder name that is app constants. Now it should inherit from system.diagnosis and first and default should inherit from Linux query. That's all. Now we are going to put some breakpoints over here so that whenever we are running the app, the debugger will stop on those breakpoints. Now let's configure our iOS project.
these are the two client id that we got from our google developer console the second one is for our ios so the logic is we need to reverse our redirect url that is com dot google user content dot apps we should create we can check it out from here inside our info.p list if you go down then inside our advanced tab first of all we need to add the identifier name then put it inside over here for the url schemes we need to reverse our client id that is com dot google user content dot apps followed by our id so dot that's all now let's go to our app delegate dot cs then we are left with this line of code that is open url so before that we have left jamrin auth presenter dot jamrin ios this is the plugin implementation that we need to do so i'll paste it over here then we are now left with open url but in my previous tutorial i have added open url method previously for our facebook authentication so we are going to copy that url and then paste it inside our ios project that's all beside our facebook authentication now we need to configure our android project too so i'll paste saved instant state over there then we need to create this class inside our android project So it is not taking let's go to our previous project and let's take it from here that's all now we need to replace this client id it also needs a reverse string we actually don't need to do anything of this we just need to copy that id and then paste it into the reverse string of ios project so i'll copy that only as i have already reversed it so i'll replace it with up to here now this my reversed android client id then we are going to paste it over here that's all now our android project is fully configured now our final work is to configure our constants that was our reversed android redirect url now let's take our reversed redirect url for from our ios info.p list file so i'll copy that
so we'll paste it over here then now we are going to copy the client id of android this is my client id of android which starts from keys that is ids and then followed by app dot google user content dot com so this is my ios client id so paste it over here that's all now our app is fully configured so i'm adding trick point over here so that debugger will stop whenever application is running so now let's start with the android project i'll change that build mode to debug mode so please make sure that your main page equals to new login page so after clicking on sign in with google so here we'll get our android client id and redirect url then i'll put more breakpoints so that whenever debugger comes up to here then i'll get my id over here then it should tell me that the authentication is completed now there is a common issue that you have not enabled http clear text so you need to go to this video's description to enable http clear text inside our android project i'll give that video's link in the description below you need to enable that so that you can make a internet connection inside your android simulators so here we have got our expected output that's all now let's build and run for our ios project so inside our ios project 2 you have your app transport security as false so that your ios app is able to run the website provided from http or https so if i click on login with google then after login it should redirect me to my next page that is my dashboard page giving me user with contents that is the user which has logged in that i will get inside this users that's all that's all for this tutorial now thank you guys thanks for watching keep in touch for more tutorials